Hey guys, still there and welcome back to Stormworks. Today I'm going to be building a new ship and this ship is going to be relying on the hydrojet or the fluid jet. These are incredibly fast ships or at least they have the potential to be. They tend to be a little bit harder to control but they are definitely way 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 faster. I'm at the larger workbench. I'm going to um, Turn this off. I'm at the medium, I suppose you could call it the medium island, this one anyway. And so far, my ships have been adequate, insofar as they haven't flipped. And overall, I'm quite happy with their performance, but I want something faster. Now, a fluid jet, I'm going to turn it the right way up, has two ports. One power port, so this is where you enter the power input from an engine, an aircraft engine, or whatever sort of propulsion you can figure and the other part needs water, a fluid intake. Because what it does basically is it takes water, speeds it up like a hell of a lot, and then propulses it or sends it out the rear. And that's how you get propulsion. I usually put mine upside down. The reason for that is that by doing it that way, I can immediately take in the water from the underside of the boat and the upper side, so this side, is going to be where the actual propulsion comes from. Usually, I go for a fluid intake, which is the larger one, but I don't have those. I'm going to have to settle for a fluid port. Next, we're going to send up some pipes, because I need to have this thing inside the boat, preferably. Like that. Now, keep in mind that these things are really expensive. These fluid jets set you back 3,000 a pop. So, if you're going to go with them, please don't lose them because it is rather hard to replace them, or at least you're going to feel it financially. Okay, so this is going to be pretty much the stern of the ship. I'm not exactly sure how well these things are isolated uh, water-wise, so I'm just going to make this an isolated block. And that way I know that there's no water spilling into the boat from that part. So this is my propulsion, or at least, well, yeah, no, sorry, it is the propulsion, but we're still going to need an actual part of the ship where the power is going to be generated. Um, let's see, a general outline. I'm going to try and make this thing not too wide, but I have found that if you get fluid jets and you don't make them wide enough, well, they tend to be rather aggressive in their turns, or they can be, depending on how you set them up. I'm going to make this a relatively sloping ship, boat, whatever you want to call it. And since it is going to be a medium platform, I'm going to go with uh, definitely towing capabilities, making sure that I can bring ships home if I lose them, which I inevitably do. So I'm going to have to make sure that it has some solution for that. Um, let's see, how do I want to build this boat? I could go with, yeah, we're going to go with pretty sleek long bow. So I'm going to set up another, let's see, over here. So this is going to be a diagonal. And then it's going to be one of these blocks again. So this is going to be a small triangle. Fill these up. Again. One, two, three, how many did I have here? Four, I think. One, two, three, four, yep. Four. Again, close them up. Now there's no telling if this thing will actually work the way that I have it planned. Not all of my boats do, <laughs> I suppose you could say. So there's a very good chance that at the stage we're actually going to be testing out this boat, it's going to behave unpredictably irrationally and it might just not float at all. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Okay, so this is going to be the general outline of the ship. These things I can just make directly go up like that and these two here. Close up the sides of the boat. Don't forget that triangle over there. Now this is where it gets a little tricky because I need to make sure that this both looks right and is an enclosed space. OK, 
Come on, up you go. A couple of blocks here, some here. I think I need two more here. I don't really like the way that the bow looks, so I might have to go in and redesign that. Hmm. No, I'm going to take off a part of the bow and make it more sleek. So it angles forward a bit more like that. Now, of course, I'm going to have to close this part off with the triangle blocks. This one turns and locks it down. Oh, we need one more over here. There you go. So that's going to be the part that cuts through the waves. Okay, time to get propulsion on here. For the moment, I'm just going to see how well this thing functions on one lonely engine. So I'm going to be building it in reverse, as it were, to make sure that I have enough room for gearboxes and stuff like that. So, um, I first want my clutch. So this is going to be a pipe, and it's going to be an angled one. Yep, that looks properly. Okay, clutch. And I want this to be power input A, so that works. Now I'm going to add my clutch switch, which is just a microcontroller that, contro that controls the clutch. Gearbox, uh, pointing at the engine. And it usually takes me, there we go, that's one. And... Come on, there you go. Okay, so this is where the engine's going to be. Oh, I'm forgetting one thing here. I need a pipe, or a split pipe, to make sure I have enough room for generators. Those things are gonna come over there. So now I can set the gearboxes up. One there, and one the other way around, and here comes the engine. And it's going to set up like that. So I need one more pipe here, and I need a sort of attachment point on this side. There. Okay, now we just pipe things up. Like that. And I have my air intake over there, fuel, coolant. I can just use the coolant that's coming down from the sea, bell, the, the sea water. I don't actually need some sort of external, or sorry, internal uh, coolant system. So this is going to be a fluid port. And this is something that I've shown you previously. This is really not that special. You just use a fluid port at the bottom of your boat, you pipe it up towards the engine, and now I have a coolant intake and a coolant output. Not exactly sure which is which. Um, this is in and that is out. So this is going to be, in my case, the lighter blue. And this is going to be the bright red saying, hey, this is warm. We still have a few pipes left to do. And the pipes that we still have to do are fuel, exhaust, and air. Now, how high do I want the ship to go? If I build it up like this... I wouldn't be surprised that this thing can still fit in the medium or in the small bay at this point. Ah, oh, well. Anyway, um, I'm going to keep my center of mass low. So I'm first going to set up the fuel tank. I want the fuel tank to be in the bottom of the boat. And since I already have this part set up for the engine, I can just use this as my fuel tank. There. Unfortunately, I cannot quite figure out how much fuel I have. Because while I have a couple of fluid parts... I don't have the fluid meter yet. So I'll have no way of knowing exactly how much fuel I have. And that's um, a little inconvenient because I'm gonna have to sort of guesstimate how much stuff I have. Now, this is gonna be the pump that pumps out the fuel. So it pumps it out of the fuel tank. That means that you want the ring part to be over here. Let's see. Um I could put it next to the engine, I think. No, it's going to go up too high. I don't want that. 
Um, in that case, I'm just going to have to put it inside the fuel tank, as I initially planned. So, it has to pump the fuel out. That means that the ring part has to be pointing towards the engine, like that. The fluid port over here, this is where the pump drains the fuel tank. I'm going to go with an enclosed pipe over here. No, not over there, here, and a straight one there. Now I just need to bring this stuff down there. So angle it in, angle it up, angle it down, and I can take a, s a couple of straight pipes and bring it in. And I usually paint these things black because oil slash diesel usually dark. So that leaves us with two more. One being the exhaust and one being the intake. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to be sending these things up just yet. Um, what would make sense in this part? What would make sense? Um, I can have an exhaust on the back. Hold on, this doesn't look right yet. There. Um, let's close off the bow first, but I usually set up a linear speed sensor in the bow as well as my speed and KPH microcontroller. Already hooking those things up, so linear speed goes there, and then I can easily take the speed sensor's output or the microcontroller's output and send that all the way back to the sensor or the display. So let's close up the bow. I want to see how far this thing dips into the water before it progresses any further. And there she is. Because at the moment it doesn't have a terrible amount of um, buoyancy. Well, it should be enough. I still have some room to build stuff above the waterline. But you can already see that it's rolling quite a lot. There is something else that I could try with this boat, and that's to make it a sort of outrigger. To make it more stable. Yeah, let's try that. Um, I'm going to set up two floats on either side of the boat to make sure it is far more stable than it normally would be. Those floats are going to be coming out of this side of the boat. And they need to be at the same level as the actual hull. So this is just a temporary measure to see how deep they need to be. And that's about this deep. This is the bottom line of the boat. So these floats are going to be assisting in buoyancy of the main ship, or of the, uh, the boat. So they need to be, well, not too long, not too wide. But they need to have some buoyancy in them, or they won't actually do anything. And you can, if you want to, even put equipment on them. Depending on how much you want to expand this platform. Alright, this I believe is... Yeah, that's the stern of the boat, so that works fine. Like that, and like this, and... Basically, you just have a couple of boxes on the side of the boat. If you really want to break it down, that's what this thing is. I'm not going to go for any particularly um, exquisite design on this one. But keep in mind, if you're building something like this, it is in mirror mode. Which means that if I'm putting something on this side, I'm also putting it over there. Please make sure that you have that feature enabled before you start building something like this. Because I've had it happen that I was pretty deep in construction of something like this, and then the game said, oh, um, you weren't in mirror mode. And you can just start over. Which is really annoying. It just takes so much work. Okay. Up you go. Um, I do want these to be fairly sleek. Not like that. Come on. So these things aren't quite where they need to be yet. I was a bit too hasty deploying those. Mm, 
that side, this side, and thankfully the game automatically fills in everything that you need over here. All the blocks that aren't initially there to make it smooth are automatically deployed. Now, if you're building a float like this, it is absolutely critical that there is no way that they can get water in these things. Otherwise, you're dragging a whole lot of dead weight with you. And you don't want to do that. If you have too much dead weight, it can just draw down the whole ship. Bring the whole thing to the depths. And if you are already using a hydrojet, then that's the last thing you want. Because they are really expensive. Okay, so this is going to be a float. And it should be just watertight. Like, Yeah, it's boxy. It's watertight. I'm going to have those connected to the main platform. So it's going to be a trimaran, basically. I'm not sure how fast it's going to be with one engine, though. I wouldn't be surprised if this is just going to be the first iteration of a boat like this. And that eventually we're going to see something far more um, powerful propelling this, video, this uh, vessel. Let's close this part up. I'm just trying to build a platform that is entirely level. So it has the same amount of uh, blocks everywhere. And I don't need them over here. Thank you very much. Bring them back here. Fill them in there. Now you can beautify this a little bit if you want to, so make them less sharp, less angled. Um, I'm going to keep these things empty for now. I first want to build the main ship out. So it's time to start building a seat. And I want to be that or I want to have the seat pretty far to the front of the boat. It's not going to be a very large vessel. That's not the plan here. I just want it to be fast, so I can take down more missions in a shorter period of time. That's the objective. This is going to be the steering house. And of course, you can make this as intricate or as complex or as easy as you like. I'm going to go with a couple of outbound windows. Unfortunately, the game is usually a little tricky on deploying those. They seem to need two blocks. It's not high enough yet. Actually, I'm so low on the water, I don't need to look down. I can just look straight ahead. No, I'm going to need the large windows here. And then I can use the... Uh, which one of these? No, the other one. That one. Small angled window. Like that. Don't need these blocks anymore. I'm going to have a narrow window down the middle. And I can just copy a couple of large windows for the side. Now I need to have seven blocks of height over here. Because your character is has a height of 175. This is one... 75 so it needs to be this tall and this needs to be the roof of the uh, wheelhouse so that's going to be the roof which means I need one more line of windows I need a very small window where's that one block here that one Unfortunately, I don't really have those for this part. At least, not that I know of. Although, no, my bad. They did add a couple of new ones. Um, hang on. Do they also have small... Yeah. I haven't played the game in a bit, and they added a couple of new windows. So you can now make windows which have this particular shape. That's really nice. That's a really good adjustment or addition to the game. 
Let's see. And then I can do... Whoa, that's a bit long. Now I need to start thinking about how I'm going to be building the sides of this thing. Let's go with something like that. And that still gives me enough room to actually add some passenger space. I'm going to need a window that can do that. Like that. Now it's going to be really tricky to see how I can close this part up. Maybe those new windows can lend a hand. And indeed they can. However, can I get something that fits in there neatly? Well, I could just go for these. That could work. I'm always fighting with these things, though. Trying to get them to fit. See, this one is on the outside, as it were. Where it should be... Hmm. No, I don't like that. What else can I use? Because I want it to basically connect to this. Or rather, to this, but then angled. I'm not sure if there is such a thing. There might be, but I'm not sure. Let's just go with a different option here. Come on, a bit more. No. One over there. And I can still have a couple of large windows on this side. Of course, I'm going to have to make sure that this thing actually gets aligned. Otherwise, it's not high enough. There. That's a little better. So that's going to be the control center of this vessel. Now what I'm going to need is enough room to transport passengers. I'm going to need a bed. So let's first bring in a bed because it takes up the most space. Um, it's not a hell of a lot of room downstairs, so I can't really use that. So I'm going to have to try and do it in a different way. Um, that means I'm going to need it in the cockpit. But where? I might have to make this thing longer. It's like <laughs> it's like I cut it off halfway there. That's not right. Oh well. This is usually how my boats end up developing. Okay, let's go for seats first. Because those are easier to place down. Let's go for a transport capacity of six. Then I can place the bed in the middle. And still have enough room to walk. Then... Add this. Um, add some more windows. These people might want to look out. I don't know. Make sure this is connected. Finish up the roof. Is there really no way to make these things windows? Screw it. We're not going to go with the windows. I'm going to keep it like this, as is. All right, um, I'm probably going to have to adjust the engine because I don't quite like the way that this thing suddenly stops. It's like somebody took an axe and just chopped off the stern of the ship. So we're going to elongate it a little bit. And that means I'm going to have to overhaul propulsion. But that's all right, because I have my engine set up. I just need to make this pipe a little longer, and that's all that I really need to do. So this continues to be the bottom of the boat. Um, I need a pipe to elongate it a little bit. Pipe straight. Where would you reasonably expect this thing to end, though? Whoops, not like that. Something like that, maybe. Uh, one more block here. Okay, so now I need to start to think about how I'm going to end 
this float. Not like that. I think I can make this work. Is that long enough? I do have doors at this point, right? No, I don't have them yet. Oh, damn it. Wrong save game. Okay, see, I can add a door frame corner, but I have no way of actually making a door inside of it. Um, hmm. So I'm going to have to keep a part of this thing open. Like that. I don't really like that. But for now, I'm afraid I don't really have a choice. Why can I not get this right? Here you go. Yeah, I'm just going to keep it like this and I'm going to take a couple of blocks out and put windows in. So this is going to be a... I don't think I can fit two large windows, but I can fit one. Take a couple of these out, make that a... Where are you? Narrow. And then these, the angled ones. And one more narrow angled. No, the other one. <laughs> Every single time. There. So now I can also look out the rear. Not sure when exactly I'm going to be using that, but again, this is a craft that I'm probably going to continue to work on for quite a while. So this is how long the hull is going to be. Um, let's put the fluid jet back here. And again, upside down. Add the fluid port. And then continue to build the rest of the boat around the fluid port. Or, sorry, around the fluid jet, not the fluid port. And this one's just going to be simply uh, moving towards the rear. So, just going to close it off. I've got to make sure I don't close it off too far. Or I won't have propulsion. Hmm... Up a little. Oh, right. I also have this side that I need to consider. Because I was making this boat wider to make sure it floats better. This is just going to be a little bit of experimentation to get right. Um, if I use a block like that... Yeah, that'll work. Good enough. Okay. Close up the rest of the space here. However, there is one more thing that I need to do. And that's to close this thing off. Make sure there's no water coming in through the part where the fluid jet is. And I still need batteries. I'm going to go with two small batteries. Or actually, do I have a medium one? I have a medium one. I'm going to go with one medium down there. I still haven't set my small generators up. Those were going to come these parts there. And I still have two things I need to do, exhaust and air. I can put the exhaust behind the craft. Or I can put it through the side of the boat. By running pipes through this enclosed space. Yeah, let's do that. Where's the exhaust? There's the exhaust. Okay, I'm not going to put the exhaust on two sides. It's going to be on one side. This is going to take a bit of work. So, I want this to come through here. 
So there. That means that this part, if I can find it, where is it? I think we're still looking at another deck layer here. Yeah, a layer of deck that isn't really required either. Where the hell's that pipe? Oh, I'm not far enough back yet. Okay. There you were. That's the one I was looking for. Okay, pipe angle. Come into the boat. And angle it down. Angle it in. And that needs to go all the way over there to the exhaust. So this is going to go to the side of the boat, and I usually use a sort of grayish pipe it through here, angle. That needs to be all the way to there. Come on, work with me here. No. Like that. Okay, to the side, down angle, and one more pipe. There we go. So now it's going through the side of the boat here. Need to make sure that it is enclosed. See, I have way too many blocks over here at this point. I don't really need all of those. That was the previous deck of the boat. And at the moment, it's not required and all of it is dead weight. The less dead weight I have on this boat, the better. Because I want this thing to be fast and stable. Alright, I know I'm not using symmetry mode here. I should, because it would make my life a little easier, but... So far it's working alright. Okay, so this is where the exhaust is going to be. Again, we're going to have to angle that thing to the middle of the roof. Pipe it through here. And this over here is the middle axis of the boat. So that's where I want it to go. A few more pipes. Nope. Pipe enclosed angle. Take the roof apart a little bit. I'll fix that later. Up through here. And I want this thing to have a sort of slanted build. Come on. Jesus, how hard is it to rotate one pipe? There you go. That's where the exhaust is going to be. So that is going to be a fluid port. Now I can close it off. I can close this off. And now I can reverse back to mirror mode. Because this I can now build into a sort of funnel. Like that. I think this is quite possibly the first or the second boat that I actually have a decent exhaust on. Now to be fair, I gotta say, and this might sound weird, but my new job is making it easier to design better boats. Because at my new job, I am working quite close. Alright, let me explain that. It's a software company. And that has nothing to do with boats, naturally. But fortunately, the... Um, place of work is located next to a pier where cruise ships frequently dock. So with that, I can sort of see how the cruise ships have their funnels and stuff like that. Okay. Um, time to build the float. One block over there. I can sort of bring these up, but I don't want them to be too slanted. So this is going to be enough. One there, one here, and the rest is going to go straight up.
By the way, I don't think I'm going to be finishing this particular boat in this single episode. Because it's turning to be quite the intricate ship. I <laughs> wasn't really expecting it to be this much work. But then again, your designs usually evolve over time. And that's how you start out with a simple design and then you go, huh, maybe I could build it like that. And for me, that's one of the main attractions for Stormworks. Okay, so I had the deck set up. I just need one more thing, and that's the air intake. That's the one we haven't fixed yet. I can do that over here. I can do that in front of the bow. So, again, pipes. Fortunately, I can just angle this right over the bow, or down the uh, center line of the ship. That is, if I can find it. There you go. Okay, through here, through here. Need a bit more. Two more, I think, and then we can go up here. Yep, that's it. All right, angled, no, sorry, uh, closed. And I'm going to have a sort of slanted design here as well. So I want one or one might be enough. A port. And then I can close it off. And with this design, since the bow is usually already out of the water, it shouldn't have any problems taking in air for the engine. So now I have enough connections. I have fuel going out, or sorry, fuel going in. I have uh, coolant going in, warm coolant going out. I have my exhaust coming up through there. And now I can close off the rest of the boat. Let's add the angled, or what are these called officially? Wedges. Add the wedge here, there, no, not over there, here. There. That should do it. Now we gotta make sure that I can actually get on board this thing. Oh, by the way, I'm going to have a couple of blocks here because I want to be able to reach the stern just by walking here, because this is going to contain a uh, towing capacity. Anyway, I need to get up on this ship. Ladders would be nice. That should be enough. Um, equipment. How much do I have unlocked? Not a whole lot. I don't have any diving gear. I don't have any... Uh, Hold on, I don't have any scuba either? No, I got nothing. Oh, that's not good. Okay, so I'm just going to have to go with a winch then. Um, the winch is going to be over here. And it's going to have a connector on it. A small connector should be enough. Now, I want to be able to control this thing from in the water. Because I'm usually going to have to lower it, swim to the connector, connect it to whatever I'm towing and then bring it towards that thing. So I'm going to have a couple of buttons just down here. This should be about sea level. So three toggle buttons. This is going to be the uh, winch out. This is going to be the winch in. And this is going to be the toggle connector. Now I'm going to have one add block over here because I want... or sorry, um, one X or. The X or is going to come in from the logic block. Actually, no, let me explain that in the next episode. For now, let's see if it floats. Then I'm going to wrap up the episode. And in the next one, I'm going to be doing all the logic. All right, it does float. Seems to be a little bow heavy there. Interestingly. But that shouldn't be too much of a problem, as I'm going to have speed. So the stern of the boat's going to be propelling the bow of the boat up. 
Yeah, it doesn't look half bad either. I know I need to still work on the paint scheme and stuff like that, but that'll happen. Can I get on it? Yep, I can get in. I have control. Uh, I have very good vision from this boat, despite it being dark. I can still see out very well. Yeah, so that works. All right, well, this is where I'm going to wrap up the episode. Next episode, I'm going to be looking at all the logic, paintings, um, lights, again, the winch connector, and just seeing how I can make this craft even better. But that and more next episode. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you soon for more Stormworks.